Upcoming coach stringer tonight is Ann Myers from the Hall of Fame class of 93 and Lynette Woodard, class of 2004. Ladies and gentlemen, see Vivian Stringer. tell you, I, I, uh, I'm seldom lost for words, but I should tell you that this is one of those defining moments. This is the most humbling experience of my life, and um, I see all of you. Um, I stand here first through the grace of God, and he has given me many blessings, and um, without him, I would not be here. So many of you that I see in this, in, here in the audience just represent what I consider to be the earth angels. Uh, because God knows I would not be here if it were not for so many of you that are sitting there. Um, <laughs> my story is, is one of a person who has taken advantage of those people. Um, you know, I'd like to believe that we are all a reflection of our family. So many of our speakers, um, David Robinson spoke of God and, and John, you know, and, and when I... As I talk, I've talked with Coach Sloan and certainly Michael. These are just great people. I think we come to celebrate and recognize the, the great deeds that they've done in this game called basketball, the passion that we all love. But, but beyond that, they're just wonderful people. And I'm fortunate to have been blessed by that. I grew up in a small coal mining town. To me, it's like this is the most unusual, unexpected thing in the world because I grew up in this place called Edenborn, and it's not even on the map, you know, uh, and, and it isn't. Um, but there, people lived, died, and they questioned not. Seldom did they travel beyond 50 miles, you know, and, but I had dreams, big dreams. I remember watching the soap opera sometimes and wondering, who are those people that actually dress in suits and gowns at 12 o'clock in the afternoon? <laughs> I don't know anyone like that. You see, because my parents and all the people that I saw leave my community had, you know, coal mining clothes and a, and a metal bucket. That's what I saw. But the one thing that bothered me is I loved this game called basketball, but I couldn't understand why I was not allowed to play because Monday through Thursday, I would work out with the guys, you know, teaching them all the things that they need to do. But then on Fridays, they were the ones that put the uniforms on. You know, and, and I just remember thinking to myself, how fair is this? So I decided the only way I could get even close to this game was for me to actually become a cheerleader. Now, for those of you who know me, I, that's not my thing. You know, two, four, six, eight, who do we appreciate? No, that's not me. I'm not a cheerleader. But I at least had enough sense to know that I could get close enough to the sidelines or close enough to the end line if they would allow me to get a little close. So that's what I did. And so I remember getting close and I would say to, you know, Bobby, get your head down, get your knees up, man, follow the blockers. Jeez, I mean, drive a little harder. Or to my brother Tim or Teapot, make the extra pass. Don't you see the guys free underneath? And I would just shake my head and be so sad. But it was my passion. You see, at that time, there was a place for girls. And that place meant that there was no way that she could imagine that she could do anything else other than to be that cheerleader. So I'd like to thank God now for Title IX because now young girls and women can play. You know, when I, when I think about this, I go from that to this. Here I am standing in the hall, Naismith Hall of Fame. You see, I did go, I was in the Naismith Hall of Fame once before. I, I paid, however. I went in there and I saw the big shoes of Bob Lanier and those shoes reflected what I genuinely felt. It was like sacred halls. I remember seeing you know, the enshrinement, the bronze plaque of Naismith, Dr. Naismith, and I thought, these are the gatekeepers. This must be basketball heaven. You know, and as I walked there and I saw the people that looked down upon me and I thought, 
I am the most fortunate person in the world to just be a part of this. And so from that to this is surreal. Those of you who know Coach John Cheney would know that he would be here tonight. So as luck would have it, the flight was canceled. So I am so fortunate to have both Annie and Lynette Woodard to stand in, and I thank God for you. Somehow I was thinking Coach Cheney was playing a joke on me. And the reason why I say that is because he's been my mentor, he's been my colleague for 11 years. Most of what I knew about this game called basketball, I learned through him. You know, he was a person that brought about equality for women, equal opportunities for the um, financial aid, for facilities and the likes. He was the one that taught me everything. There wasn't a decision that I ever made that was even close to basketball without, first of all, consulting him. And so to not have him here, you know, is a hurtful. But on the other hand, since we do have television, I'm sure he's sitting in that limousine on his way here and he's hearing me talk about him. I would have said to him, Coach, am I all right? Did I, did I pass? Because everything in the world hinged on what he thought. And more important, he was a great person that loved other people. And I really want to thank Coach Cheney because I realized that had it not been for Coach Cheney, I would not be here. We all need people who believe in us. And I was very fortunate because I had a mom and dad who taught me that you can be anything if you just dream and you work hard to make those dreams become reality. But by examples, my parents taught me. You know, I, 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 I've heard others ask, well, you know, how do you make it through? And um, I want to tell you that, you see, each and every day, I watch my father leave to go to, into the coal mines in August with winter clothes on. Why was he doing that? deep into the ground, risking his life to feed our family. And many times at night, I would hear the pain, the moans through the walls, because by the time my father was 40 years old, he had been diagnosed with Burgers disease, and he had his legs amputated. And so each morning, he would slide down the steps, put his prosthesis on, but never complain and go to work. I thank him because he taught me to never make excuses. He continued to work and support our family. Early in, in on, my father passed and my mother picked up the reins. My mom, little did I realize that my mom would, by example, having lost my father at an early age, be able to demonstrate to me how strong I needed to be when things happened. Because I think what we all know, ladies and gentlemen, is that uh, if we live long enough, we'll have all kinds of trials and tribulations. And if we're fortunate, we'll have people, guardian angels, people that will somehow pick us up and help us to get through. I know that I stand here on the shoulders of so many, but it was my mom who would walk from door to door when she moved into the home with us in Iowa, trying to sell tickets to the fans and say, well, you know what, you forgot that. Would you please buy a ticket for my daughter's basketball game? You know, the girls need a ticket. You know, girls need people in the stands as well. We used to say, you know, my mom could sell ice to Eskimo because she was able to convince people. My sisters and brothers, my family, the rock, the strength of me, were the ones that when I lost my husband early, and I want to say to my sister Madeline, thanks for moving your entire family into our home so that our children, our family could go on. Thank you. I want to thank Ricky, my sister Ricky. It was she and her family that fed us. People don't understand what it took to get through this, and I thank you for feeding us each and every day during that time. I thank my sister Verna, who gave me scholarship money so that I could continue to go to school early in life. My brother Tim and I have been joined at the hip, and everything that I've done from the beginning to the end has always been connected to Tim. Most people think we're twins. And my youngest brother, Jack, you know, I've, I've been so proud of the way he's grown up and the way he's been as a surrogate father to my sons and my daughter. And I thank my family from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much. <laughs> my husband, Bill, was the he, he, he was the best husband and father that you could ever, ever have. Um, 
He was a rock, the wind beneath my wings, the love of my life. And yet he was talented in his own right. He had started medical school, and yet he quit medical school to become an exercise physiologist so that he could somehow help me. You know, he had to wear both hats as both a mom and a dad. You see, because as was stated, my daughter Nina contracted meningitis at 14 months. And so it's kind of unusual when you have a coach that is a female. And in this case, so many people have to join in. So I just want you to know that um, I have a feeling that both dad and um, dad and Bill are somehow smiling from above. I want to thank um, my sons, David and Justin, and my daughter, Nina, you know, for your quiet reassurance during an extremely difficult time in our life. I thank you for encouraging me to go on to coach. Um, I think it was Justin that may have said also, Mom, what else can you do? <laughs> but it was they that gave of themselves. And I thank you so much. I know the sacrifices that you've meant. I thank Nina because every time that I look into her eyes, I gain strength. I can never give up on Nina because Nina has never given up on me. She's never given up on our family. Nina has been the source of strength for all of us. And so I just want you guys to know that your dad and I both are so proud of all of you. I love you and you have been my passion. Thank you very much. There are many people who have been a part of my life and I would just like to say very quickly, these are selfless people that somehow, just somehow pick up the phone and answer the call always. It's Janice Fitzgerald, Ann Hill, Barb Yenchik, Margaret Alston, Dr. Christine Grant, George Raffling, Pastor Sores, my niece and adopted daughter, Keontae William, Dr. Griffith and Dr. Zimmerman for being my friends and being my coaches and being so much to me. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'd like to thank the coaches and the staff, as well as the managers and the friends, and yes, doctors, because we've had doctors always, as well as Nike Corporation and the extended family and friends for the continued support that you've given. I would like to acknowledge my assistants because of your hard work, your dedication, and perseverance, and I know your heart, the love that you've given me. I stand here not for myself. I stand here to represent all of you. Thank you so very much. I love you, and may God bless you. Thank you so very much, my assistant coaches. Thank my, the parents who were willing to give me an opportunity to coach their daughters, and last but not least, and really not least, is truly the players. It was you, you were the ones that worked hard, persevered, sacrificed, and made it all happen. I want to thank you because as I walk into the Hall of Fame, we all walk into the fame, Hall of Fame. I thank you for teaching me that it doesn't matter where you come from, but where you're going. At Cheney, we had two leather basketballs, no budget, and four rubber balls. And yet this team played for the first national championship. At Iowa, I thank you for the resilience that you taught me during the time that I lost my husband. It was you who somehow rose against all odds and was able to play when I didn't think that I could even stand, but somehow we ended up playing in the Final Four. And to Iowa, the, wor the worst team that I'd ever had. No, Rutgers was the worst team that I'd ever had in 2007, at least I thought that. And they taught me that it doesn't matter how you start, but how you finish. It was that team, that team that had suffered its first worst beginning, but ultimately played for a national championship. It was this team that would be able to receive the indignities that were spewed upon this team and yet handled it with such class and dignity. <laughs> to all of my basketball daughters, I love you. I thank God for you. And I thank all of you for the privilege that you've given me to stand here and be a basketball coach tonight. I love you. Thank you. Thank you.